Our NTT ballpark cam takes us live to the Oakland Coliseum in Northern California. That is where the Oakland Athletics will host the Atlanta Braves in a very quick two game set in Northern California. That is where we find our Kelly Kroll, the Braves reporter for Bally Sports West. And Kelly follows the uh, the Braves on a daily basis, does a tremendous job. And Kelly, I'll ask your professional opinion. Braves in first place tied with the New York Mets. How did they do it? A lot of different ways, right, Alana? They had contributions, whether you look at the rookies that have all come up and Spencer Strider kind of solidifying that fifth spot in the rotation has meant everything to this ball club. Michael Harris taking over in center field from a defensive standpoint. That put everything in order for them and certainly started to look a lot sharper on the defensive side of the ball. And then you got Von Grissom, who's had 99 plate appearances and is, you know, hitting – a cool 343 here in basically his first <laughs> month of the big leagues, making it look so easy. But I actually had a chance to kind of ask Brian Snitker about this this morning, just kind of walking into the park and thinking, man, you know, how'd you guys do this? And he goes, it really is all about the players, all about those guys inside the clubhouse. Because you look at what they did a year ago, Alana, right? And they were just sort of swimming around 500 for the longest until after the All-Star break. So I think... Even though, yes, the Mets had a 10 and a half game lead early and, and you look at June, what this team has done going 62 and 24, they just didn't panic. They know how long this season is. They did it a year ago. They ended up on top of the mountain. And so I don't think there was anything this season that was going to come as a surprise other than we just got to start playing our brand of baseball. And that's exactly what they've done for the last three months. And it has been from a position that you know so well and what I get to experience night in and night out, it really is a thrill to watch this team every night step on the field because they're they're doing something spectacular and really historical when you take a look at it big picture. Yeah, Kelly, a 721 winning percentage uh, in June. It started with a 14 game winning streak from June 1st to the 15th. And let's brag on those young guys that you were talking about a little bit. They extended Michael Harris the second. We know what Spencer Strider is doing already in the record books in terms of strikeouts in a game. And we also want to ba uh, brag a little bit more on on Grissom because they are 20 and five as far as their record is concerned since he made his debut in early August. Can you speak a little bit more to the youth movement of the Braves. It's unbelievable in the sense of 21 year olds. Now I know Spencer's just a smidge older than that, but let's just say they're all about 23, 24 or younger over there in that clubhouse. And they're coming up here prepared. Um, like no moment is too big. They can face Hall of Fame pitchers across the way, whether it's Michael Harris or Von Grissom. And they believe that they are ready to take on that challenge day in and day out, and they've proven that they have the capability of doing that. And to me, I think that's what's been the most impressive is the makeup of these 21-year-olds who just already seem to have it figured out. And that's crazy because we talk about guys who've been doing this for 14 years and are still tweaking things and trying to figure it out. But uh, I don't want to say this and get in trouble, Alana, but there is that phrase, ignorance is bliss. And I think there might be <laughs> a little bit of that right now as they get into this pennant chase, which they've never been a part of. And yet the pressure doesn't seem to phase them whatsoever. I asked Spencer Strider going into this start today, hey, man, you're coming off this historic 16 strikeout game where, you know, you're now surpassing a guy like John Smoltz. What were some of the tech like what were some of the conversations like and he's like I don't know Kelly that was five days ago I just I'm I'm focused on my next start <laughs> and I'm like yeah, I mean that's the kind of maturity <laughs> sometimes it's better to not know what you don't know if you will let him let him live in that ignorance is bliss moment for a second what happens <laughs> Kelly to Von Grissom when Ozzy Albies comes back yeah, that's a really good question. We have seen him go out and work in left field a little bit, and I think that maybe that's the plan. I mean, listen, this guy's a ball player through and through. He was a shortstop before being asked to move to second base. We've seen what he's done there, and it's been a seamless transition. So I don't really think the Braves are too worried about saying, all right, kid, go out to left field and give it your best shot. I think they feel like he can handle just about anything, and as long as he's producing at the plate, we know this, any player across the board, they're going to find a way to get you in that lineup. 
I want to ask you, you're doing all of this right now, Kelly, such a tremendous record in the month of June and beyond, and you're doing it without some of your reinforcements. You're going to get Mike Soroka back, of course, and of course you're going to get Ozzy Albies back. I would imagine that can only add fuel to what is already an inferno. You would certainly think so. I mean, the disposition of Ozzy Albies is something that, regardless of how well this clubhouse is doing, you just can't get enough of a guy like that and the energy that he brings. They are going to be so thrilled to have him back, and I know he is chomping at the bit to get back on this field and be part of what this team is doing right now. And then you've got Mike Soroka, who, like you said, has been – fighting to get back from injury for nearly two years now and he is set to make a start. I'm pretty sure it'll be tomorrow Alana, but they're going to let him keep doing his thing there in Gwinnett until basically the minor league season comes to a close and then I think they will turn to him and see sort of where he's at. The best thing for Mike because I don't think they're looking so much at his results right now as his health, how he feels each day after these starts that he's having because there is going to be rust when you haven't pitched for again nearly two seasons, but I think that they could use him in a lot of different capacities depending on what he feels like come postseason. So I know that's certainly what they're kind of hoping, that he stays healthy, he feels good, and then let's take it from there and see. Because he has already said he would do whatever it takes just to be involved, even if that's you know coming out of the bullpen, which <laughs> what a luxury that would be for this club. What a luxury that would be. Kelly Kroll doing a great job covering the Atlanta Braves, tied for first with the Mets in the NL East. Thanks so much, Kelly. We appreciate it. Always a pleasure to be with you all, Alana. Thank you.